Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time you're tuning in. I was in G-Develop working on my quiz project, and I thought about a video I did a while back about scene transitions where you used a tween and made the screen black. Well, there is a, an extension that makes that a whole lot easier, and it's called the Flash and Transition Painter. And it just basically lets you create your own scene transitions so easily like really easy and i can show you um by using different paint effects so you can do flash vertical horizontal or circular effects um i've already installed this in my project so let's go ahead and get to the adding a new object go all the way down until you find a shape painter object click on the shape painter object you can change the name to whatever you want to but i'm going to call mine fade me please please fade me and then go to behavior and then add a behavior let me see go here and type in the word flash or paint or whatever and then look for flash and transition painter add that behavior and then apply it now drag this object over to your main scene window and then go to the event sheet now go to the actions and click on that object, the shape painter object. Go all the way down to its actions. Find this right here and then look for paint effect. Change the color to whatever you want. I'm going to choose black. Change the duration to five seconds for a smooth transition. And I'm going to be using the flash effect. And I'm going to be having that effect going forward. And the opacity is going to be zero. So let's OK to that. And let's preview this and see how it looks. yes 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 fade me out please that's what i like to see all right so let's go here and let's do this backwards or backward and let's go here fade me in please this is perfect this is so easy well this doesn't make any sense why this is this easy but it is easy look at that only like one action i only have one action so let's go ahead and add this here. Let's move this down here. I'm going to click on this block and then press the D key, which will disable it completely. Go back to my main scene window. And then from there, I'm going to show you another extension called the button state and effects extension. So that basically just lets you get any object and turn it into a button or let it behave like a button. All right, so let's go here and add an object, a sprite. I'm gonna go to Piscal and edit something really quick. Let's do, let's make sure this is a full paint. Green, color the whole block green, then change the name to green button. All right, save that. And then I'm gonna go up to the behaviors. I'm gonna add a behavior. I'm gonna type in the word button boom all right so button states boom all right so I'll go back and add another behavior and look for button color tint tween bam so that basically lets you know change the tint whenever you hover over and everything technically you could have clicked on that first and gotten the button states but you know whatever uh, it doesn't matter all right so I'm gonna go ahead and let me rename this to green button so many green buttons all right so i'm going to move this over to the main scene window i'm going to increase the size a bit and then i'm going to go and preview and see what it does with this extension look at that it tweens and the color tint changes now if i click on it it gets darker which simulates a button press that is so easy can't believe this all right so um you can with that, you can do like all kinds of things with your actions, like conditions and actions. So your objects can turn into like really cool buttons. So let's go ahead and go to the conditions right here and let's go to green button. And we're gonna look at the conditions it has. If it's, let's do is pressed. So this condition is if the green button is pressed, we're going to, let me press the D button here. Let's do a trigger once. Wow, tr this is like my second nature. I just do this all the time. And you're going to click on that and press the D button. So um, and undisable it. And let's see what happens when I press the green button. Look at that. Now, if that isn't simple, I don't know what is. Let me change that around, though. Instead of backward, I want forward. So let's try it now and see what it does. 
click fade me out please now that was really simple and this is like really simple that is like one thin block one thin block but um that's really easy let me see if i can do something else with this because i always like messing around with things like this let's try to move this here and i'm gonna disable it for right now by pressing d move it up here and then i'm gonna go down here let's go over here let's go back to the main window let's create a duplicate button so let's go here all right duplicate and this is going to be i don't want another green button so let's see if i can swap this up here let's go and back to pisco and let's make this yellow instead so i'm going to go ahead and go here and click on yellow and then make sure that is selected and then the full paint and then I'm not going to overwrite it, but I'm going to do a new one by clicking here in new and naming it to yellow button. So it's going to be yellow button now. I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go here and change this name from green button to yellow button. And let's see. And then I'm going to go check the behaviors. It has all the same behaviors as the one I previously copied. So that's good. All right. And then I'm going to do one more duplicate here and i want let's go purple i want to do purple purple is the color well purple means traditionally it means royalty so i'm going to choose that do new and then do purple button all right perfect save that and let's go ahead and go to the behaviors are all the same let me change the name because it makes no sense to have a purple button name yellow button that's confusing and wrong all right so let's do purple button all right so we're going to drag the yellow button out here and i'm going to drag the purple button out here and let's go ahead and what's the size of this this is 150 to 147 so let's go ahead and let me select both of these at the same time go down to the custom size so i can resize them both at the same time 150 147 and then i just unselect deselect both of those and go back up here so i have all three buttons here different colors and all that good stuff all right so i'm going to go back to the event sheet or the event window whichever you prefer and i'm going to go over let's see if i go here okay yeah let's control c and control v and control v copy and paste is your friend in gdevelop all right yellow and then i'm going to change this to purple in this doesn't this look so easy and then i'm going to bring this down here control c control v and then i'm going to change this to backward all right and then i'm going to go you know what i don't want it to be black as well so i'm going to go here and I'm going to change this from black to red. I want this to be red. So make this red. And then I'm going to go and add this one. Paste this one here. And instead of, well, you know what? I want to change the effect altogether. So let's go here and let's make this circular. And let's make the color orange. Okay, so we have the color being orange right here. Let's save that or OK that. All right. So now, um, in theory, this should produce different transition effects or different color. Yeah, different transition effects whenever I press them. So let's go ahead and go. Let's preview this right quick. We're looking for some good results. I like good results. All right. So let's go to the green. Boom. Fade me out, please. All right, that's good. It works. Let's do yellow. Hmm. Okay, a red fade in. It looks kind of eh, but I can fix that. All right, and let's do the purple. Yes, I love it. I love it. It's giving me um, old cartoons, Tiny Toon Adventures or whatever. <laughs> but anyways, let's try to do something else here. Um, I don't want to do that. How about we go ahead and... Let's see. Let's make this a horizontal. Let's make this one vertical. 
and then let's make this go forward instead and then we're going to have backward for the circle so let's see what it does now is it going to work right or is it going to give me problems all right so yes drop down the black screen drop down come on another effect let's click on the yellow button yes sweep through the red sweep through and then let's click on the purple button and see what it does perfect beautiful i love it okay so that's good it works out very well let's do this here so i've got that to work let me see what else i can do maybe i should try to get those done in a sequence so let's go ahead and try I'm gonna go up yeah this is what I'm gonna do so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this and then get rid of that trigger once while true get rid of this and then get rid of that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these blocks and I'm going to make them sub events of the green button press. So basically just drag this over as a sub event and then drag this as a sub event of that sub event. So we subbing it and I'm going to add weight actions in here. So let's do weight 5.5 seconds because 5 seconds is how long it takes. So I need a little bit longer for the weight to move to the next one. So that's 5.5, .5, copy and paste, your best friend, and let's preview and see what it does. So it should happen in sequence without me pressing buttons. So once that finishes, then the red happens, and then once the red happens, 5.5 .5 seconds, then the circle. Boom. Beautiful. And you can create all kind of like trippy effects and stuff with this. Like if you really were doing some kind of like hypno hypnotic type scene or whatever in your game, you could have like some really cool transitions. Really cool. So let's go ahead and delete you. I want you to be deleted. So let's delete the object, delete yellow. And then I'm gonna copy the copy this and paste it here. We're gonna delete purple and then we're going to add a weight in between that as well because I don't want it to be deleted instantly now let's see what happens so it, in theory it should you know what I need to add trigger once while well, true I just love doing this I don't know and then we're going to see everything happen in a sequence so um when red appears and ends, yellow should be deleted. And then when the orange appears and ends, purple should be deleted. So let's go here. Dun, dun, dun. Boom. Okay, so red is going to delete the yellow when it finishes. Boom. Yes, and then orange is going to delete the purple when it finishes. Boom. Okay, so yes. That works well. There's also another action or another condition. Um, if the scene transition painter ends that you can mess with and it allows you to um, do certain things as well. You don't have to do it like this. But um, I just kind of wanted to show that because I was thinking about it. And I was like, well, didn't I do a video like some odd months ago about using tweens? to fade out and I said well there's this flash and transition painter extension that makes that so much easier and I'm pretty sure that if somebody was like new um, to G-Develop and I'm like you know what I need to fade the screen out or make this scene fade how in the heck am I going to do this do I have to follow this old antique way of you know creating an object and making the screen black with tweens or I can just use the paint and transition extension very easy but that's all i wanted to talk about i'm just kind of fiddling around with variables and stuff right now nothing too important um i will be doing probably another update maybe on some extensions that i've been messing with i've been doing a lot of videos more than you know usual i'm gonna have a little bit more free time to do that but um that's all i wanted to talk about so thank you for um, tuning in to this one and I will hopefully be posting another video soon um, I have somewhat finished doing my tarot or my tarot reading application 
um, in GDevelop, and I'm doing the quiz one, and then I want I'm there's another one I gotta do uh, with the zodiac signs. So I I got like a couple of them that I want to finish. You know, projects that I've started on already. I still have the um, first person shooter that I want to complete, um, and the you know just the open world type one. But I'll get to that at another time. But anyways, thanks and have a good one.